hey, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. I've got an interesting video for you. You know, one of the neatest options you can get on your Shop Saber CNC is a rotary axis. And typically, that can be used to make turnings and a lot of neat things. But, you know, you can do 3D stuff also. You could do a vase with acanthus sleeves. You could do a cabriole leg. The problem a lot of people have is what's involved to actually create the model that you're going to turn. So I selected something pretty common today, and that's a table leg. And that table leg has a squared around transition, and it has some mortises in it. So it's a, a typical thing that you would make on a CNC with four axis capability. All right, now, here's what the workflow is going to be. I'm going to create the profile 2D drawings in VCAR Pro. I'm going to bring those into Fusion 360 and create the solid model. Then I'm going to take it back into VCAR Pro and do the tool pathing. Let's get started. Out in the shop, we have a Shop Saber 23 with a rotary axis on it. And I want to show you how you create a drawing to make a leg. So what you see on the screen hopefully will be the finished product. And it's a table leg uh, for a coffee table. And it's got a squared around transition. And it's got some mortises that you might have for uh, rails. So we'll look at that. All right. I'm going to actually use two pieces of software. I'm going to use VCAR Pro to do some initial drawing and the tool pathing. And I'm going to use Fusion 360 to actually create the 3D model. Let's get started. Okay, to start this out, we're going to actually take a, just a 2D profile and we're going to revolve it 360 degrees to actually form uh, the object. And then we're going to cut the corners off. Now, let's, let's take a look at that. First off, uh, Let's take a look at it this way. Now, you see the profile? Now, if you notice, I went through and I showed this diagonally. The reason I did that was because you, when you actually create the profile, you need to have enough material here. We'll, we'll cut the excess material off. So I start out with a drawing that represents half of this profile. Now, we're going to do that in VCAR Pro. You could do it in Fusion 360. I just think it's easier to draw sometimes in VCAR Pro, and we're also coming back to VCAR Pro. So let's switch over to VCAR Pro, and let's see where we got started. Okay, what you see here is VCAR Pro, and on the left you see basically half the profile of the turning. And I left uh, a drawing over on the left-hand side so you can kind of see how that squared around fits in there. When you're creating this profile, you have to have the diagonal of the square, not the actual square size itself. Now, what happens is the router bit comes up here. This is between centers, and it comes up here, and the router bit follows that contour right under it. And then it rotates, and it follows it back, and it rotates. And when you've gone 360 degrees, you have your object. Sometimes it gets a little bumpy down in here. So I found that if you ramp this back up before you turn it, it's much easier. And so I do that on both ends. And so I created a couple more drawings here. One's called top plug, and one's called bottom plug. And when we're done, we'll actually, uh, we'll actually include those into the model. So to go from this to Fusion 360, we need to export DXF. So I'm going to first export this one, this file, export DXF. And we'll put that, we'll call that leg profile. And then this one, we'll do this one, file, export, DXF. We're going to call this one top, let's call this top plug, okay, and then we'll do the same thing here, we'll call this bottom plug, and that's saved. Now we're ready to take those files into Fusion 360. Now let's see how we get from our 2D drawing that we created over in VCAR Pro into Fusion 360 to create a solid leg. So we come over here to insert DXF, okay. First thing it says, which plane do you want to bring it in? I'll just do it on this one. And then what's the name of the file? And the file is going to be a profile, leg profile. And there aren't any units involved with it, so that's why you see that message, okay? So that looks okay. All right, now how do we turn this 2D drawing into an object? Well, we revolve it. So I come over to Create, Revolve. Okay, it says select the profile. That's that. And then it says select the axis that you want to rotate on. That's that one. And we're going to create a new body, or we'll create a new component. We'll hit OK. And we've created a component. 
up. So that's the first part, okay? Now, but we need a squared around transition here, so how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna go to Sketch, Create Sketch, and we're gonna select that surface. So our sketch is on the end of, of that uh, piece of material. We're gonna create a rectangle, or square actually, and it's gonna be 1.875 by 1.875, and we'll hit Enter, that creates that. Okay, then I'm going to create a line that goes from diagonal to diagonal. There's a number of ways you can do this. All right, what I want to do now is I want to hit that. I'm going to turn that line into a construction line. Whoops. Let's get that line into a construction line. There we go. All right, now I want to actually take this. I'm going to tell it to move it. And I'm going to tell it to move it from th this midpoint of this line. To that center and you can pretty well tell if it's right <clears throat> that square is symmetrical so that looks pretty good I'm gonna say stop sketch now I, I'm gonna turn that into uh, a 3d so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna I'm just gonna hit Q on the keyboard I'm gonna select that and that and that and that I'm gonna take this error take that off that should that should subtract it hit OK and that's our squared around transition Okay, now let's go over here and look at render. Let's render it, and then let's uh, let's put a color to it. So, how about cherry semi-gloss? We'll drag that over there, and there's our leg. So that's what we've created so far. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so the next thing we probably want to do is uh, actually bring those plugs in. Here, let's go back to uh, model. Okay. And we'll come to DXF or under insert. And we'll get our sketch plane. And we'll select that one, will be fine. And we'll select our file. We'll get the top one first. Okay, we got that. Okay, and all right, so here's where we're at. So what we want to do, that, that's, that's what we're going to revolve. So let's go over to Create, Revolve. Okay, let's make sure we create a component. The reason we're doing that is because you can, can assemble or combine components. Okay, we want to select the profile, so that's that shape. And then the axis it gets rotated on, so that's actually the center line right there. Okay, there's our component. All right, that looks good. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Let's, uh, let's go back and insert. DXF, uh, let's see, let's go back to that sketch plane again, just for the heck of it. Okay, select the file, and video, this one's going to be the bottom, and it should pop in here. Okay, now let's turn around here. <clears throat> okay, we'll create another revolve. We're going to create a new component. Wants to know the profile. Wants to know the axis we're rotating on. That's that one. Okay, now one of the things that you notice here, this is everything lined up because our DXF drawing lined up. Well, it doesn't always work that way. So let's let's do something. Let's say I'm going to select that and let's say modify. So let's modify that component. And what we'll do is we'll just move the thing around. Let's see, it's out here in space, okay. Now, this happens quite often. So here's our part out in space. We brought it in and we didn't get it lined up. And I want to show you how you get that lined up because there's a real easy function that does that. <clears throat> so, and more often than not, this is what happens. So I'm com coming over here to modify a line. Okay, make sure I'm picking a component. Okay, I'm going to select right there. I'll come right down here, and that aligns it. How about that? So, that little line command is really, really handy. Okay, what else would I do? Well, I'll probably go over here to render, and let's put some color to it. So, let's get that done. And we'll do the same thing here. So, now we have our same wood grain. That looks pretty good. 
this would be a great time to save. Okay, so now we've got uh, we've got that together. Um, one other thing we can do now is we can combine those into one object. Okay, now let's go back over here to uh, our model. You notice there's three components. So let's select those. What I want to do is I want to combine all those together so that becomes one component. So I go to Modify, Combine, and it says Select them. I'll select those now. That basically joins those all together. And we'll hit OK. And now, once we, if we try to move it, it's basically one object. And the reason I did that, it just makes it a lot simpler. So you don't get things out of out of alignment so accidentally. So now at this point, uh, before we leave this drawing, let's go ahead and put our mortises in there, and I'll show you how we can eliminate those when we actually output the shape. So let's take a look at that process. Okay, the first thing we do is uh, we create a sketch. And I'm going to select that surface to be the sketch. Okay, then I'm going to create a rectangle. And let's make this 0.5 by 2. Okay, I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to select this. And I'm going to tell it to move it from that point to that point. All right. Now it's still selected. Then I'm going to actually click that and I'm going to say move it over 0.25 this way and then move it this way, point, minus 0.5 and there it is. It's, it's, so it's really, there. now I say stop sketch. Okay, I hit Q which is push pull. Alright, and then we'll just drop that minus 0.75 and there's our mortise. So that's one of them. I want the, another one over here. So we'll do sketch, create sketch. I'm going to select that. Okay, it's going to be down here, I believe. It's going to be down here. All right, so we'll let's get back over here and let's get there. It goes. Okay, we're going to do a rectangle once again. I usually just draw it out here in space. So two and 0.5. Okay, and I'll just circle that, and I'm going to tell it to move it. And this time I'm going to move from this point to that corner. And then we'll switch to this. It gives us our error, so I'm going to move it up 0.25. And I'm going to move it over 0.5, so that's a minus 0.5. All right, and we'll hit that. Looks like that's right. We'll hit Q. Catch that surface. Once again, it's a push-pull, minus 0.75. And there's our legs. So now that's how you put the mortises in. And let's look at it under render. And it looks pretty darn good. So that's what our legs should look like when it comes off the machine. Okay. Now, we're just about ready to go to VCar Pro. But I've got a problem here. Is I really don't want those mortises. I just want the solid object. And there's a way to get rid of those. Or to turn them off. I'm going to show you. When you get on the timeline down here. See, that was a mortise and that's a mortise. If I right click that, it basically says suppress feature and that mortise disappears. Same thing here. I right click it, suppress it. Now, when I output that, all I'm going to get is a solid object because I don't want those mortises because when I tool path it, those, those will go into play. Okay, let's make, make sure we've saved everything. Okay, now if I recall, one of these is a component. I right click and I say save as STL. Okay. And we're going to put that leg video files and we'll call this uh, uh, 3D leg. All right. So that becomes an STL. Right now I've created a 3D object that we need for VCar Pro. Let's go see how that's done. Okay, we're back at our profile drawing in VCar Pro. Uh, I need one dimension, and that is how long is this? So there's a couple ways to do it. I could just do this and say how big is that block? And it looks like it's 17. You could also use a measure tool. Measure from there to there. Okay. And it's 17. All right, so that's all right. And I'm going to make sure that's saved, and we're going to close it. So we say File Close. 
So this is a really neat feature of eCar Pro, and it's going to give us the ability to actually unwrap that turning and toolpath it, and when you're done, you're going to have a program that creates that. So, but the first thing you do is you use a gadget to do a wrap setup. So here's how we do it, and, and it, this has to be prior to a job being open. So I go to gadgets, wrapping, wrap job setup. All right, now you got to pay attention to this. Cylinder length or the length of the material is 17. Cylinder diameter just needs to be bigger than it takes to create that part. Okay, now this is this has to do with how your fourth axis is lined up on the machine as to which way it wraps it. This is where it sets the origin. Uh, this is your touch off. Is it going to be the cylinder surface or is it going to be this, the center? It's, uh, if, it'll be more accurate if you make it center. That's like touching off to the bottom of the plywood. It's just going to be a cylindrical wrap. So that's the setup. Now here's what this actually did. This created a setup and one length is 17 and the other is a circumference of that and that's why it's this odd number. So it basically created that. Now here's the neat part about this. We come over here to modeling. All right, we come to this right here, this icon and leave 3D legs what I call that. It's an STL, it's gonna open it up and there it is. So now what we need to do is we gotta get it aligned correctly. Uh, boy, that's pretty close. Let's see if centering it fixes that. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, now watch what happens here. I'm going to say okay, and it's going to say, do you want to unwrap it? I'm going to say yes, and that's what it creates. So it actually creates uh, a surface, and now once I tool path that surface, when I run it, it it's going to, it's actually going to rotate one of the axes as it goes. So in this Y axis, it's just going to rotate it. And when you get finished, you'll have the turning. Okay. Let's look at how we'd actually tool path that. Okay. Now that surface is, that surface is no different than one you did with leaves on it. It's the same concept. If you look at it from the 2D, it, it's pretty plain. All right. So what do we do? Well, how would we sur how would we tool path a 3D surface? We typically use a ball nose tool and go back and forth. In our case, this is going to be wrapped. So we're just going to go back and forth for and start here. And instead of moving in this dimension, it's actually going to turn the rotary a certain amount. And a unit of 360 is one revolution. All right. So let's just do it simple. Let's take a finished tool path. Okay. We'll use a, a eight inch ball nose probably set a step over 10% in our feeds and speeds. I probably use a taper tool because they don't break nearly as easy. Okay, we're going to let the boundary be the material boundary. Now you might have this set up where you had more stock somewhere and you said, okay, I only want to apply this in this area. Um, we'll do a raster. I'm going to set it at 90 degrees. I want the tool path to go this way. And let's hit calculate. And it's going to take a second to calculate as it does all finished tool paths. Okay, and there's the tool pass. Let's, uh, if we preview it, let's see what happens. Well, it's too fast, you can't see it. <laughs> Basically, it was going back and forth here. Now, let me show you something that's really, really neat. Let's go over here to where it says tool paths, and let's go to tool path drawing, and let's say wrap X values around the Y axis. And that's what happens. There's your turning. So what actually comes out when you, when you interact the rotation, that's what comes out. Now, Aspire has a little bit better graphic of this. Let me show, show this to you in Aspire. Okay, this is the same setup in Aspire. Now, look what happens when you do simulation. The simulation is a lot better, so that's kind of what it looks like. But what do you see this? You go to Tool Paths, Tool Path Drawing, and you wrap it around there, and it create, there's your object. So, Aspire has, has much better Tool Path simulation, but that sure looks like the part that we modeled. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, we were able to go out on the machine and actually run that part, and it came out really, really nice. I really wanted to show you in this video a real nice workflow that didn't require a lot of expensive software to accomplish, and to show you how you can actually make something with that fourth axis on your, on your ShopSaber CNC. If you have any questions, you can contact us at ShopSaber.com. Thank you for watching. <music>